So just another quick video about stems in Visual Studio 2023. And this video is about how I set it up on faster laptops with a supported GPU, but a pretty slow supported GPU. So this is one of two videos and the other one being on slower laptops without a supported GPU, but this one is with a supported GPU. So, and this video is handheld because I don't have a screen capture on this laptop because it's actually my primary DJing laptop normally. Uh, so, like I said, it's not the fastest one. So if I go into system settings here, you can see, if you can see it at this far, that it's a GeForce GTX 1650. So uh, it's an NVIDIA still, but one of the slower ones that's supported. Um, so it's a bit entry level and a couple of years old. So it's only separating at maybe five to six times playing speed. That means that for a three to four minute track, it'll maybe take 30 seconds to separate. So not the best but still I basically go for it and let it always separate uh, using uh, stem separation version 2.0. And so what does that mean for the settings? Well, if we go into back to Visual Studio and I go into the settings here and I go into uh, the, the options and I go into performance, you can see that it's basically all default. There's no little cross over here. So everything, all the stem settings a default. So stems real time separation is enabled. I don't save them. Uh, stems allow reduced quality is ask because that's never really supposed to happen with this setup. And I don't use any of the stems fix uh, little settings you can set. So it's full on, if you will, for the stems 2.0. Uh, so why is that this interesting? What's my point then? The point is that even though it's a slower separation on an older DPU, you can still use it for real time separation. Uh, uh, and let me show you how. So now I load a, a, a track here. And you can see how down here, then it's computing the stems. And if I hoover, then you can see it's 9%, it's 14% and 19% and stuff like that. But that doesn't really matter because I've also set up this little tick. It's the same one that's down here on the stems 2.0 uh, pad page. But in case I'm, I'm not on that pad page, I've set up this little tick so even though the, the computing stems is not done, this indicates that wherever I'm at in the track, and this is my first cue point here, it's ready, I can use it. So let me just do it over, so you can see it, because now it's almost finished computing all of it, but I unload it again, and remember I hadn't set it up to save anything, so it'll do the work one more time. So load it again, and now it's ready for use. So if we play now, You can see that it's just working, like I would expect. But if I do this, then it's not working until it caught up like this. So. So that's the important part. It's actually doing it on the fly and it's actually doing it fast enough for regular mixes. As long as I don't jump around in the track, then as soon as this indicator lights up, then my, my stems 2.0 are ready for use even on this really, really slow GPU. At least it's one of the slows that support it. So, uh, so this is a little tick that I'd really look at. But don't I use prepared tracks then? Well, I do. You can see that down here that I have a, this track that's a prepared track because I use it a lot. And I want to use the stems often when I use it. So that's a prepared track. It'll also be down here in the stems folder. So you can see it's, it's going to be down here. But uh, generally, uh, I don't use the prepared stems much. But of course, if I do use them and I load a prepared one and play it, Then I can jump anywhere in the track instantly. And the stems will be ready all over the place, right? Because it's a prepared track. So that's the difference. But for mixing, it doesn't really matter. And with these settings, I always get the best quality, even with a slower GPU.